Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, I bring to you today the behemoth from the Antarctic versus the thriller from 20 Leagues Under. I saw Godzilla King of Monsters, and in the mortal words of Ken Watanabe, let them fight. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Dan. Um, thank you for coming to my channel, Comic Chop News. And today we're going to do a quick instant reaction, non-spoiler review to Godzilla King of Monsters. I just got home from it. And first thought is, for everybody who complained about the 2014 Godzilla, about not being enough Godzilla, not enough monsters, you got what you wanted. Uh, this is chock full of monsters. Mike Doherty and his effects team did a great job of bringing them to life, especially with some of the arrivals. Uh, especially uh, Rodan was one of the standouts. Um, he comes out of a volcano. Uh, we got a little bit of everything. There was a larger Mudo. I think they were calling it Mudo Prime. Uh, some woolly mammoth looking one. I don't know exactly the name of it. Some of them they never went ahead of, of their designations. Uh, I had Mothra in its pupa form and then its full moth form. Uh, so the pros of it, of course, the monster fights were fantastic. Uh, again, I didn't know how Doherty was going to handle it. And for a big budget movie like this, it was fantastic. Um, the downside for me was... Whereas in the 2014 Godzilla, where I thought there were strong character performances by the humans and we didn't get enough of the monsters. This one, we got a ton of monsters and fights and every time that the humans showed up, it kind of dragged the movie to a standstill and they were kind of unlikable. I found myself liking the periphery characters more than I was Vera Farmiga, Kyle Chandler and... Millie Bobby Brown. Uh, Ken Watanabe was solid. Um, again, he's more of a periphery character. He kind of said that I was gravitating more towards them. Uh, Sally Hawkins was in it as well. Uh, Thomas Middleditch, uh, the comedian, was in it. And he kind of filled that Charlie Day um, the Pacific Rim type role of the scientist who's a little kind of hyper. Um, so King Ghidorah was fantastic the fights between him and the other monsters and also uh godzilla uh we get more of a feel for godzilla where he hides when he's dormant um I, we saw a lot more of him than we did in the last movie and it could be because of the bigger but i mean you you can see the money spent left and right in this movie and it's spent well in my opinion Again, um, I felt the movie dragged every time the humans were on. Um, the performances, especially for some of these actors, were not really up to snuff. I thought Vera Farmiga and Kyle Chandler were so unlikable that every time they're on the screen, you just want them to be gone. And at one point, um, one of the characters, uh, O'Shea Jackson, uh, the actor, uh, I believe that's Ice Cube's son, makes a comment of... You know, I'd run away from home, too, if I had you guys as parents. And it just kind of sets, like, yeah, we know they're unlikable. And you probably have had enough of them and want them to be off the screen. Uh, Charles Dance, who plays Tywin Lannister, is in this. He's somewhat of an eco-terrorist. Again, he's there and gone really fast. Um, kind of pops in and out, but really doesn't have a ton to do other than to kind of being the twirling his mustache bad guy, sort of, but um, a little bit more subdued. Uh, Kyle Chandler fills the Nick Cage role of, like, craziness in this movie, or overacting, which is a shame because I've seen him in other stuff, and he's actually usually pretty good, but this he was not, and Millie Bobby Brown also. I started questioning why the hell she was even in this movie other than being kind of a plop device at one point. Uh, my, my standout, though, the arrival of Rodan... Some of the air fights, especially with Rodan in it against the Monarch Air Force uh, coalition, I guess, with the army. Uh, Godzilla displays some powers we haven't seen before. Um, also, I'd like to let you know that there is an after credit scene, so hang in there. The credits are a little bit long, but they do do a tribute to one of the 
deceased um, men who wore the Godzilla suits. Um, so in all, I think I, I'm sitting at probably a 6.5 on this. And that's the weird thing. I really enjoyed this movie. It's just the character moments in this, unlike the last one, kind of were a detriment to me in the movie. And I started checking my watch, which is always a bad sign. And uh, I want to say the movie clocked in at just almost two and a half hours. So a little bit overly long, but the fights make up for it. And this is a great beginning of the summer movie. Uh, there are great scenes with the monsters where they kind of all have their moment. Uh, even Mothra, which I always thought in the old movies, Mothra was kind of lame. Uh, this one, they gave her a lot more to do. Uh, Rodan was more badass than ever. King Ghidorah. Um, there are some scenes with Godzilla in their fights that are just absolutely brutal. Uh, they show a lot of uh, human collateral damage, too, of them being eaten by the monsters. Uh, there's one such scene where there's an ejection from a plane and Rodan just swallows him up whole. So all in all, um, I have this as a great summer watch. It's a popcorn movie. Um, of course, you go into a Godzilla movie, you're not looking for this huge drama. But the weird thing is this movie tried to insert this family drama in there. And unfortunately, no one really gave a shit about it. No, the characters were unlikable. So you kind of are just like, get the hell off the screen, you know, let's get the monsters back. I, uh, I wish I could say there was a standout performance by a human in this. Um, maybe Thomas Middleditch at one point. Um, I mean, Ken Watanabe and Sally Hawkins were, were great. But they're very bit parts in what could have been bigger. Um, saw a little bit of Kong in Skull Island, too. Um, they keep kind of teasing and teasing that we're going to get that. Uh, we're still not quite there yet. Um, I would have actually liked to see him end up in the States, at least, to set this up. But maybe Godzilla's going to go to Skull Island. I don't know. It, it's a very weird thing with how they're kind of introducing this slow burn of getting them together. Um, if you're a baseball fan and hate the Red Sox, you are going to love this movie because Fenway Park gets fucking destroyed. Like, actually all of downtown Boston. So I can see Yankee fans, like, getting up and cheering during this um, just because a lot of them are dicks, let's just be honest. Uh, so with that being said, um, again, I really enjoyed it. It's going to feel a little bit overly long because of some of the character moments, and it's kind of a shame that it became a detriment to this movie. Uh, if this was just a straight creature film, probably an 8. Again, Doherty and his effects crew did a fantastic job having these big creature moments. The fights were not forced. Uh, some weirdly tender Godzilla moments also with... A little bit of, you know, touching the snout. Uh, a good movie could have been great. So with that being said, I, I implore you all to actually go see this movie because I want more of these being made. And I know the reviews are all over the place. Um, I didn't read any of them, but it, it's always, I saw just, you know, getting mixed reviews. And this is a movie that can definitely generate mixed reviews, but totally worth going on a weekend afternoon if you've got the time and just losing yourself for two and a half hours. So with that, thank you. Comment, like, share, subscribe, and I again, go see this movie. Good night and farewell.